Good day! Welcome to the JavaScript and C vlog. Today we're gonna talk about what is ECMAScript 6, what is ES6, what is ECMAScript, what the heck? Well, in the last episode of this series, I said, Well, you can do that today with ECMAScript 6 or... And you may be wondering, ECMAScript 6 say what? Worry no more, because I'm gonna tell you what ECMAScript 6 is. And I will show it to you in the next slide. Which doesn't work. Or... Yeah, this one. ECMAScript is to JavaScript, but uh, C Sharp is to C Sharp. But... Wait a second. Uh, yeah, this makes it clear. We usually use ECMAScript when we want to refer ourselves to the specification, to a particular version of JavaScript. So we can say that ECMAScript is like the official name of the language, and JavaScript is the popular name, like uh, how everybody calls the language. And this is because of some trademark issues, because uh, Oracle and at the time uh, some microsystems own the name Java, so they couldn't create a new language called JavaScript and therefore they call it ECMAScript. So every time that you hear ECMAScript or ES6 or ES7, ES8, ES2015, we're actually referring to a specific version of JavaScript. If you think about how JavaScript has been developed throughout the years, uh, the first specification was in 1999 with ES1 and, and it has continued over the years until uh, ES5 uh, or 5.1. So ES5 is the JavaScript that you all know and love and is implemented and supported in all browsers today. And ES6 is the next version of JavaScript that was approved last year and that is being implemented right now by all browser vendors. And it comes with a ton of cool features like classes or the spread operator or arrow functions, uh, short syntax, a lot of syntactic sugar that's gonna make your JavaScript much, uh, read much more readable and much nicer. And this is why I say that ES6 is the shit. Uh, yeah, that was a good one, right? Uh, so, so ES6 is also called ES2015, that's the official name of the language, and that's because from now on we're gonna have a new version of JavaScript every year. Last year it was ES2015, ES6, that comes with a ton of changes, and now this year we have a shorter release that is called ES7, ES2016, that comes with a couple of new features. So you may be wondering, who decides what goes into JavaScript? I will tell you. Uh, there is a group called the TC39, uh, that is uh, a group made of all the major browser vendors and technology companies, and they uh, are the ones that uh, get proposals from people uh, and decide whether or not they are good ideas to become a part of the language. A uh, cool thing is that this uh, JavaScript and the ECMAScript uh, specification is being developed in the open. So if you go to GitHub, like you can see here, this is uh, their repo, where they uh, summarize what is the status of each one of the proposals that are being evaluated for the next version of JavaScript. So if you look here, we can see, for instance, um, that right now we have these current proposals and you know they have like different stages from one to four, where four is something that is approved and is gonna come in the next version of the language. Here, for instance, we have uh, a screenshot that I did like a couple of weeks ago. And we can see that in the next version of JavaScript, we have this uh, includes and the exponentiation operator that are gonna come uh, as soon as the uh, browsers feel like implementing them. Uh, and then you have like uh, a lot of other proposals that have been made by people in the community, by people working for these big companies. And if you click on them, you want to see like how the specification looks like and get an idea of how this feature will look like in the future and how can you start getting used to it and so on and so forth. If you're interested in learning more about the history of JavaScript, there is this awesome uh, podcast called JavaScript Jabber, and there is this super awesome episode where they talk with Brendan Ike about the history of JavaScript, uh, you know, the old uh, war stories when he was working at Netscape, and they were, you know, implementing one of the first browsers and wanted to bring interactivity to the web, to web, 
and they wanted to bring interactivity to the web and you know it's pretty nerdy and fun to listen to. Okay so we've talked about what uh, Ekman script is, we're, we've talked about what ES6 is and now you want to get started. How do you get started? How do you start learning? Uh, so I'm gonna show you a couple of resources that you can use to start learning ES6 that are pretty good. Okay, so here there are some resources that I have uh, saved for you that I think they're great to find out how to learn about JavaScript. Here you have an article by Axel uh, about how to get started with ES6. Uh, you have this great summary of ES6 features uh, by Luke uh, that is on uh, GitHub. And you can see, you know, here you have like arrows, classes, template streams, structuring, and rest, generators, blah, 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 blah. There's also a great summary done by Nicolas uh, called ES6 Overview in 350 bullet points. Very good. All the features and he also has links to more in-depth articles. Also a great place to learn ES6. You have this book also by Axel uh, that I guess I haven't read it yet, but I'm sure that uh, if it is like his blog post is gonna be very in depth. You can buy it or you can uh, go here and you know you can read it for free if you want. Uh, also another great introductory article is this one by Eric about how to learn ES6. Also very good. And finally if you're a C sharp developer you might be interested in to this book that I'm writing that is JavaScript uh, for C sharp developers with a hint of uh, fun seeing it. So these are all great resources to get started with ECMAX Script 6 and learn the features. But the next step is how to run ES6 in the browser because not all the features of ES6 are implemented in the browser today. So you cannot just, you know, start writing classes and, and expect the browser to be able to understand that. So how do we do? So in one hand, we have uh, Editor Lab, where we want to write ES6. We can write whatever we want. And then on the other hand, we have uh, the browsers and Node. And you know, all browsers support, like today, a brand of ES5++. There is ES5 as a baseline. And then you have like some features that get implemented into each browser, uh, you know, every month. So how do we translate, you know, from ES6 to ES5++ that can run in the browser, we do that using uh, a transpiler, uh, something that transforms this ES6 code into ES5. There are several transpilers out there and techniques that we can use to achieve this, but the one that is like the de facto standard, the one that is the most being used is Babel or Babel or Babel. Babel. So if you want to learn both about Babel and ES6, you can go to Babel's Babel's website and they have this nice REPL here that if you click on try it out, you're gonna get this uh, REPL where you can just type in um, ES6 code and see how it gets transpiled to ES5 and how it's run and you can see the results. So here, for instance, I have created some uh, ES6 class and I'm doing like some weird thing creating a subclass factory but you can see how this code gets transpiled into ES5 and how you know there's some output coming here we have some weirdness going on with the super 300 uh, scroll bars but don't worry about that this is a great place when you can start experimenting with um, ES6 and getting results in addition to Babel, you also have jspin.com that also allows you to do Babel and, you know, get it also outputted to a console. And then you have also jsfiddle that also supports ES6. So if you have uh, worked with any of these prototyping tools before and you like one better than the rest, all of them support um, Babel and ES6. So here you have it. So choose the one that you like the most. Another great thing about Babel is that it not only lets you experiment with ES6 uh, features, but it also lets you start using features that are uh, in the proposal stage. So features that are coming in ES7, or even features that are gonna come in the future, uh, like async await and uh, decorators. 
So how do you enable those? You go to here uh, to plugins. Bubble works in uh, some sort of um, plugin uh, system. So if you go here, you can see that they have like some presets and these uh, presets are like collections. So here you have like all these 2015 features and here you have all the stage O proposals, stage one, two, three, and then some React specific stuff. Uh, so for instance, if we click on stage uh, one, uh, we, you can see that we have some uh, features here that are coming in the future or perhaps they may not be coming, but you can start using them right now if you want. So this is good for testing, uh, you know, these repos and you can, you know, prototype and experiment with the features that you go learning, but sooner or later you want to be able to use this in your production application as well. And the way that you want to do that uh, is going here to setup. So here we are in Babel ESIO setup, and then, you know, it's going to tell you, okay, which tool you use in your application today. Uh, let's say that you use Gulp. Uh, that is a very popular task runner. You click here and then it's gonna go uh, and tell you how you install it in that particular environment and how you use it. In this case, we're having a Google plugin called Gold Babel that we can use to transpile our ES6 to ES5 as, as part of our uh, build pipeline. Uh, but you know, the, it has a lot of uh, super helpful information for other environments. You know, if you're using Browserify, if you're using Webpack or something else. So this is great. So that's it. We're done for today. I hope you've learned more about ES6, ES2015, uh, what it's about, what is ECMAScript, how you can start learning about it, how you can start using it in your production environment. I'm gonna put the links for all the different resources that I've talked about here somewhere in the description and um, yeah just go ahead look at them you know it's the future of javascript and javascript is the future of programming forever so check it out have a great day and be awesome bloopers welcome well 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 welcome to the javascript welcome to the JavaScript Mansi. Welcome to the JavaScript. Welcome to the JavaScript Mansi. Joder, I'm strong. So, so. Welcome to the JavaScript Mansi blog. Vlog. The blog. I don't know how you say. Vlog. And the S6 is the next version of JavaScript that is being implemented right now. Right now? right now. PS6 comes with a lot of features that you will love.